goodness. Here we go again. Come on. I like to send a special dedication out to all my family and friends. Come on, wow. Let's do it again, bad and show. I said we all must huh. go. again Wednesday night. Let's do it again, band and show with the one and only Tom Mo. Straight out of Washington, D.C. What's up with you? Man, look here, man. Last week, man, was really nice, man. It was really, really nice. I know y'all enjoyed what we had, man. We had um, Jesse Jane, the uh, rapper from uh, Waldorf, man. She she did a good thing and she had uh, her assistant, uh, Miss Cece. Yeah, they shared a lot of good information with us, man, about breast cancer and also about her career. Not just breast cancer, but cancer free, let me say that. And also about her career uh, as a rapper. So this this week, uh, I'm doing a little something different, man. I had a, a wild day today. So what I was going to do, I kind of switched this thing around, and we're going to make this segment, this segment a open table discussion. Because there's some things I want to talk about, some things I want to get off my chest, man. And I need y'all to call in with some comments or some things y'all want to, you know, say about what we're talking about. The number is 240-719-2560. That's 240-719-2560. Feel free to call in at any time, at any moment, for whatever reason. Okay, now today, my guest is my son. That's right. I call him Big Kelbo, my man. Now, what we're going to do, Kelvin, is that I'm going to let you re reintroduce yourself yeah. and then um, kind of like where you grew up from. All right. Doing you. Well, my name is Kelvin, a.k.a. Kelbo, Big K. So I'm going to call him Big K. 
um, from Washington, D.C., Southeast to be exact. Um, right now, you know, working right now, trying to hop into the acting career as well. Um, made a couple moves this past year that led me to a couple other things. So, um, yeah, but know. that's going to be something we're going to talk about. Yeah. I don't want to get too much too fast, man, because okay. I want to talk about this first. Yeah. Now, unfortunately, and I need your opinion on this, you know, let's don't take this personal mm -hmm. and family. Right. You know, we got to take this as if it was somebody else out in the street. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Uh, I woke up this morning mm -hmm. and I, I'm so busy, I, I woke up, I rushed out the house right. to go take care of some stuff. Um, throughout the day, I had to circle back home mm -hmm. to uh, pick something up and noticed that my truck was gone. Right. I got a pickup truck, man, F-250. Yeah. Gone. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying to myself, I ain't on no drugs or not. I know I ain't gave nobody my truck. Yeah, I bet you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Where is that? Yeah. So, of course, I got my surveillance cameras to protect my home. Yeah, in case y'all don't know. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, and I um, went in the house and immediately wind the cameras back. Mm -hmm. And around two something in the morning, you know, I see on the camera that this dude, brother, nigga, whatever you want to call him, mm. is at the truck. Right. And there it goes. Truck gone. Just like that. Truck gone. Mm -hmm. I'm saying, I don't even know. Like, when I left out this morning, I didn't even recognize this joint wasn't there, Slim. Yeah, you just moving on your yeah, way. Yeah, I'm just yeah. gone because, you know, I got a few cars, so I ain't, you know. Right. I rose out. So, I'm not a police man. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I don't really call the police because I really don't have no issues. Right. And if it's a street issue, I deal with it myself. Right. Now, this, these are the times where the police supposed to be there mm -hmm. for you. Exactly. Not only because someone took the vehicle, but because in order for the insurance people to do what they got to do, you got to have a police report. report. All that. Right. So, I, I, I called the police. They tell me, man, we're going to send somebody out at their earliest convenience. <laughs> at their earliest convenience. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. I ain't going to wear. The show don't start till 930. Right. I'm going to hang around. Mm -hmm. I hung around, man, to about three hours. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying to myself, man, I got things I got to go do. Mm -hmm. I can't just sit here. You know, it don't take three hours for the police to come. So I jetted out. I rolled out. Right processing me on my way here to the show. I get a, a, a call from the uh, police station, oh, but I miss it. Mm -hmm. But I missed the call. I just ended up looking at my phone and said, oh, somebody called me. I called back and they said, yeah, Prince George's count. So I talked to you later. I'm like, yeah, man, my, you know, I called you all three hours ago to uh, report that, you know, my vehicle was stolen early this morning. Mm -hmm. So she said, well, where you at now? I said, well, I'm on my way to my job. She said, well, uh, that's why no, the police didn't uh, come because when they came, you wasn't there. I said, well, they did come, but they came three hours later. Right. I said, I'm supposed to sit in the house and wait four or five hours for y'all to show up. So she's like, well, sir, it was a non-emergency. So I'm saying a non-emergency? You know, they done came and took my property, and that's not important? A whole car? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like I could have had a kid in the back. Exactly. You know, it ain't like they say, well, sir, you okay? Or, you know, or nothing. It's like it's a non-emergency. We'll get there when we get there. How you oh, feel about that? The way I feel about it, first of all, I feel violated by you just even telling me that story because for somebody to come to your property and take something that belonged to you, you know what I mean, the way that it, and the fashion that they did, you know, I feel violated. I feel uncomfortable because I always feel like somebody watching, you know what I'm saying, watching what I'm doing and things like that. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, we got to do what we got to do to protect ourselves. And, you know, as you can see, the police took three hours to even show up. You know what I'm saying? And uh, they just take whatever happened to you as, like, just brushing it off. That's you know right. What I'm saying? It's, it's not, not them. And that's the thing with the police. You know what I'm saying? They always say, call the police for this and that and don't handle it in your own your own way or whatever. But, you know, when you do call them, they don't, they don't, they don't come. You know what it's, I'm saying? Or they come when everything's all over. I don't have nothing personal with the police. Right. And the reason I say that is this here. When I was in a life of crime, mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. I did what I did, and they had the job to do what they had to do. Right. That's life. Mm -hmm. You follow what I'm saying? I got you. Now, and I'm saying, me being on the other end as a citizen, right. I've been violated. You see what I'm saying? And you're going to tell me it's, it's not important. Right. Because I ain't saying I got shot. You know, I done stabbed a nigga or something. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Because if, if I'd have said, yeah, well, it's a body laying out there by my truck because they tried to steal it last night, then they'd have been all around there yeah. within seconds. Been all on the news. But do it take, do, I mean, but do we have to go to that measure to be treated a certain way? Is the police really here to protect us or are they here to be able to say, we'll get there when we get there? That's what it's saying, like, and it also seems like whatever area you calling from. Prince how, George's, yeah, hold on to that. Is how important it is to them, you know what I mean? So, like, with me living, I live on the south side, and certain things happen over there that just don't even make the news. But, like, you know, somebody get killed or something like that, you might hear about one here there, but it be a lot of them. Right, right. But right. then, let somebody of a, you know, different skin color or something like that get killed up Georgetown or something like that, Oh, it's all over the news, and they got they got rallies trying to find out what's going Look, on. Look, I but, talked to somebody, yeah, man, yeah. and they told me, they said, you should have put your white voice on. Yeah. So I'm going to give you a demonstration yeah. of my white voice. Uh, I should have called, hello, how are you? <laughs> Someone just stole my vehicle. <laughs> I guess that tone right there would have got me some immediately attention. Yeah, but me calling saying, yeah, man, what's up with you? <laughs> and I think that's how they do sometimes. They may they may take the tone of your voice. They may take the area they know you call them from or whatever, and they might just look at it like it's not important. We get there. It happens all the time. We get there when we get there. And that's the crazy part about the system because um, it's all about who you are or, or who they think you are. Well, this is what I need. Man. I need you, you listeners out there, man, to call in 240-719-2560, man. We, we, it's open discussion tonight, man. Call in. Tell me how you feel about that situation that I just occurred myself, went through. Ask me some questions about it. Let me know how you feel about it. Maybe you was in something similar. It ain't had to been that, but something similar. And let's talk about it. Because it's, it's a shame, man, that not that I, I, I don't need the police. I don't need the police. Because one thing I know too for certain is that it's gone. And I'm not going to ride around the city looking for it and all that, man. I ain't got time for that, man. Whoever took it, man, they took it because everything they needed better than me. And that's cool. The insurance company, man, they're going to do what they're going to do. If they don't do nothing, what can I do, man? Mm -hmm. All I'm going to do is continue to come here, man, on Wednesdays, man. And I'm going to open up a fund that, man, we're going to get some donations in here to give me another truck. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> Call in, man, 240-719. 2560. And let's talk about a, that. Start of a GoFundMe joint. Yeah, GoFundMe <laughs> a truck. You know what I mean? Come on, how am I going to get to work if I ain't got one? So look, though. So let's go back, Kelvin, on um, when you when you was younger, man. And uh, I know you was, you was playing football at one point. Give, right. give us a story about that. Yeah, well, I played football just about all my life. You know, started off in the Boys and Girls Club, recreation centers. I played for people like number 14. Um, I played for, at one point, Woodland. Then I left the, you know, the boys and girls for rec football. Mm -hmm. Started playing school ball, played down Jefferson, down Southwest. Then eventually played for uh, Wilson, which okay. I left my mark up there. Oh, I left you, my mark what, everywhere I played. But what you mean you left your mark up Wilson, you know, though? Right. Like I'm still a, still a legend out here. Man. Oh, yeah? <laughs> they, they, they know what's up. Jeff, Wilson, whatever. You know what I'm saying? I had big dreams of... You know, going further in football. I mean, I played college football. I went out first, went out Fayetteville State um, to play football down North Carolina, but I ain't had the grades or the SAT score. Uh -huh. So my first year, I couldn't really be part of the team um, officially. I could like work out and stuff like that, and I got great shirt. I was Wilson. I was messing up. You mm -hmm. know, I was mm -hmm. just good in football, and that helped me get in school. Right. Um, but I could do the work. Right. Get it twisted. I could right. do the work. Right. So when I went out Fayetteville. Went out there, um, I think in the spring, that's when I was actually able to involve myself with the team. But then I messed that up because I was still young. You know, I was doing certain things, smoking, drinking right, right. at that time. 
and uh, end up missing practice, got kicked off the team. Okay. So, you know, whole family, you know, they expected me to play and stuff like that because that's what I did all my life. That's right. That's everybody was, right. you know what I mean? So, in the neighborhood and everybody was all, you know, I'm one of the first that leave out of the neighborhood and go play sports mm. or whatever, you know, coming straight out of Southeast. So, I was kind of embarrassed when I got kicked off because I was just like, I'm going to call home and tell the family about this, you know. Right. Got kicked off the team. Everybody expecting so much of you. So, I mean, I made another attempt with the coach to try to get back on the team, but he was more of a, non, a no-nonsense type coach. You miss, right. I missed one practice, and he just kicked me off the team. Do you remember his name? What was his uh, name? Coach Phillips. I'll never forget that. <laughs> <laughs> Ken Phillips. Put him on the spot. Yeah, Ken, I'll never forget that. I learned a lesson from him that day because yeah. I'm going up there with that attitude like, you know, I'm like that, right. you know what I'm saying? I'm coming up there with that D.C. attitude, like, man, it's whatever, I'm do what I want to do. And, you know, got a rude awakening. Right, so, right. you know, I ain't really going to the story why I got kicked off, but, you know, basically right. I didn't go to practice, and and he basically was just like, you're done. That's right. what he told me. Right, right. So, went back to him, tried to get back on. He talked to me, he was like, look, you're a good player and everything like that, but this is a lesson you're going to have to learn. Right. You know what I mean? So, I learned a big, important lesson that day. End up transferring, going to Frostburg State, where the Redskins used to practice at back in the days. Uh, went out there, played for a year, but it was like my heart wasn't in it like it used to be. Right, you know, right. It was just like it became more like a job than just having fun. Right. So, you know, played out there for a year, end up getting hurt, you know what I mean? And um, after that, I was just like, I got hurt like close to the like, last two games of the season or something. After that, I was just like, you know, wasn't he tripping off playing no more. So, so how you get hurt? What happened? I mean. In the game, we was playing, uh, what's that, Navy. Like, if you didn't start, if you didn't start out there, then you had to play on, they had like a, let's say like a, call it like a JV or something like that. But mm -hmm. it was basically for a team so the coaches can evaluate you during the week to see if you're going to move up, you know what I mean, to uh, up number one or number two or something like that. Right. So we was playing Navy. And, um, you know, Navy got, like, five different teams or whatever. So, we was playing Navy. I was getting my mind that game, too. I'm talking right. about, about five solo tackles in the backfield. First, right, right. Like first quarter, man, my cut blocked me mm. to my ankle. Yeah. And I just remember my body going this way, my ankle going that way. And, you know, my man's and them that was there, they say I screamed. I don't remember doing all that. <laughs> you know, so I just remember laying on the field, holding my cage, just like, I don't even want to look at the joint. You right, know what I'm saying? Right. But it wasn't as bad as I thought, but I had to, you know, do rehab and everything like that. And um, it was just like, after that, I wasn't even, I mean, I wasn't even tripping no more. I was, it was right. more so I was doing it for my family and, right, like, right. like, everybody at home started doing it for myself. So, at the end of the season, I was just like, that was just it for me. I was yeah. like, I don't even want to play no more. So, if you, so it's some, some young guys that's out there maybe be listening or watching right. uh, this show tonight. What would be... Uh, something that you want to share with them about just being a part of football or, you know, having that dream to be becoming, you know, an uh, NFL player or something? Well, I mean, one thing I learned, I mean, everybody don't make it. You know what I mean? Everybody don't make it. I mean, but if you're hot into it and that's what you want to do, then don't give up on it. You know what I'm saying? At one point, my heart was in it like that. But when my heart wasn't in it no more, I knew that wasn't what – I was here to do anymore. Right, so, you right. know what I mean? But if your heart is really in it and this is your dream, then do everything you got to do to get there. So, but what about the, the grade thing? Because the grade thing plays a part too, right? Yeah, grades play a whole uh, big part in it. I mean, um, I mean, without grades, you can't stay in school. You know what I mean? But some are luckier than others because some people, especially if you if you that caliber of player, some people go to school with the – Attitude like I'm only using school to get here, not even thinking about graduating or anything like that. They just using it to go to the next level, right. which is the professional level. Right. So some people just do what they gotta do to get past. Some people get hooked up. Right. Like you know they may not, they might be an all star player, but you might not even send them in class, or they might got all the easy classes right. or something like that, right. just right. to make sure they got that whatever the grade point average is, 2.0, 2.5, just right. to stay on the field. Right. But, I mean, at the end of the day, if, it's not guaranteed you're going to make it. So if you at school, you might as well do what you got to do. So just in case you don't make it, you got something to fall back right, on. Right, right. And, and that's what I had to realize. Right, right, and, right. But well, we're going to hold you up for a second because that's, that was the key point is that even though 
you if you like into this football thing and you trying to man, you got to get that education with it. Mm -hmm. Because if something happened, if you end up like Big K, man, you get an injury, man, with though, you know, you can't actually go back out there. You gotta have something to fall back on. So y'all y'all gotta y'all gotta keep that in mind out there. The mothers, the fathers that's pushing your kids into these sports, because there's a lot of y'all out there doing that. And you gotta know if your kid really wanna do that. Because as kids, we, we always want to try to satisfy our parents when we're growing up and doing things that we really not into. You know, trust me. I know y'all out there talking about nigga shut up. <laughs> but I'm telling you the truth. It's the round table. But look, we got to take a break. It's uh, 240-719-2560. Give us a call in, man, for we can talk about some more things, man. We'll be right back at you. I'm going to go with you now. See you soon. We're gonna do this for y'all, man. Do something we put together. Huh? It's called UIA. take a quick break man for something man but look here check this out I was just thinking man I went down to uh I went up up a Marlboro last night for the uh go go conga go go Congo celebration the uh, anniversary was it six six years six year anniversary I think if I ain't mistaken but man we had a ball down there we had a ball down there man everybody was out man Winko Man, I'm talking about they bought the old school oh, out. Yeah, the, the oh, Congo okay. out, man. You know, you know they be doing that, right? Yeah, I know they do. I ain't know it was last night. Yeah, though. but they, they, man, they was down there, man. They had all the old school out there, man. They had the young brothers out there. You know, the little legends, man. Mm -hmm. they, and they was in there, man, getting that work in, man. Mm -hmm. We just take our uh, hats off to the gentleman that, man, keeps making that possible year after year, man. It was a birthday party, too. They were celebrating on the brother's birthday. Mm -hmm. uh, last night but I, I usually don't go out to a lot of events mm 
Yeah. But I went out last night to show my support, man. And uh, and I kind of enjoyed myself. Then I had to roll out because I had another event I had to go attend. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to uh, move past that now. But like I said, man, I'm glad y'all back again, man. Let's do it again, band and show. Live TV. Now, look, I got my main man here, Big Kelbo. Mm -hmm. Man, we, we just talking about normal life stuff, man. You know what I'm saying? The phones ain't ringing yet, man. I don't. I think y'all scared of the phone. Call up this joint. They need to, probably need to start putting the phone back on the corner. Like uh, my man said earlier, put them drones back on the corner. You have to go put a dime or something in there. I know it won't be a dime now. Now they probably be about three dollars. Oh, yeah. You probably got to have yeah. a whole pocket full of change. Yeah, bring a dub. You, you know what I'm saying? Down, but uh, <laughs> like I say, my my guest here, man, is my son, man, Kelvin, man, and um, we want to talk about what I want to talk about to you because you know I'm I'm just really going over the successes and how you overcame different things mm -hmm. as you uh, get to where you at today. Right. And I want to, uh, we, we talked about the, the football uh, career. So let's let's talk about when you was into the music, doing the DJ and things like that when you was in college. All right, so, you know, as a football, um, you know, I had to find out what I was going to do. I wanted to show what I was going to do in school. So at one point I was an art major because I used to design clothes. I was an art major. Then I said I was going to go into computer science. And um, that didn't work out for me. And then um, I got put out of school. So, you know, I came home, was kind of disappointed about that, because again, kind of embarrassing, because, you know, my own dudes worked hard to, you know, make sure I stayed on the right path, because I could have easily went the other way. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you home, and you kind of feel, you know, like you disappointed people, whatever, you know, I was working, but I was like, man, this can't be it for me, so. Did what I had to do, got back in school, and um, I think one day I was just in a, one of my uh, old football teammates, he had me coming to a studio with him up there. Mm -hmm. So he was, uh, you know, recording some music, and I didn't even know we had a studio like that up there. Right. So, you know, I was in there, you know, had all the equipment that you use in, in here and there, and I was just like, you know, got interested in that, whatever. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know, he was like, I go to school for this. I was like, you can go to school for this? He like, yeah. So I was like, what is it called? It was, you know, mass communications. So I took an interest in that. Um, got into the mass communications field. I focused in like radio mm -hmm. and uh, audio production and things like that. So while I was there, I had my own radio show at the school. Um, I was part of the newscast. Oh, okay. I did the sports segment. Um, and then it led me to getting like an internship at a PGC. Uh -oh. This is back in like 2004. I got an internship with uh, Michelle Wright. Okay. They used to be on there. So Shout out she, PGC. Shout out yeah, Michelle Wright. Yeah, so, you know, um, that was in like 2004. When I was there, man, I met a lot of people, learned a lot of stuff, um, saw the ends and all the business, saw mm -hmm. what, you know, if I do get into this field, what I'd be dealing with. Right. And um, was working there for free. I think worked there the whole summer of 2004. And then when I came home, I actually started working there for free um, in their research department. Basically, like, uh, I don't know if you know when people call your phone, I actually take surveys and stuff mm -hmm. like that. I used to be one of them people calling your phone, I actually take surveys. But all I was doing was playing music for you, and um, you had to vote on the music. Right. And that tells them, they do reports at the end of the week that tells them what music they should be playing, what songs they should be playing, what songs they shouldn't be playing. Right, so right. Did that for about maybe like two years or something there. And then they, that actually, that got me on the payroll there. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was making a couple dollars an hour. I was working where I work at now. Um, and I, as soon as I get over work at like four o'clock, I was shooting out Land of Merlin and going to the radio right. station to do that right. every day. So right. yeah, that that was a good experience for me. I mean, I learned the business, learned what was really going on. So, so basically what you're saying is that pretty much right now, you could actually run this up in here. Man, I man, I gotta get back into it. You right, know what I mean? But right. I, I know what certain stuff do, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But and, you got the experience. I got, yeah, I got the experience. Yeah. I got the paperwork and see. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? I just ain't, yeah. ain't doing nothing with it. Yeah, but um, see, yeah. but 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 I'm looking at the trans the transition mm -hmm. from the football situation mm -hmm. when it didn't work right for you, mm -hmm. then 
if you ran into the music situation right. and it kind of worked pretty good for you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah, you, you elevated, you end up getting some paperwork saying, man, you certified, man. Right. And, and, you know, you, you're still moving in life is what I'm saying. Right, right. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, ain't stop me. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? So the, the thing is, is, is motivation mm. that we must have as people to know that when one door closes, is another door that we can open and go through. Right. Now we all know that that God is a part of the whole the whole situation. Hey, keep him first. You know because it, you know like because I look at a lot of things that I do. You know a lot of people be talking. But you do a lot of stuff. You know. But I learned this from Will Smith, man. I was looking at one of his uh, interviews on on TV or. YouTube or something, mm -hmm. and he always said that you can't have one business. You got to have multiple businesses because businesses are seasonal, mm -hmm. meaning that one business you may have may be booming in July, right. and the other one that you have may not be doing as well. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of depending on all that money for that one. Right. But if you got that one working and this one working and this one working, when this season is down, this one is up. When this one go up, then this season come up. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you always right. constantly got some money coming in right. to, to take care of your fed. That's like if you're a barber, you know, that's an all-year-round job. Right? Yeah. Everybody need your haircuts all year. Yeah. But if you do landscaping, you know, your, your, your booming time might be during the summer. Summer, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Winter, you might not be yeah. seeing all that money, yeah. so you got to have something else exactly. to fill in for yeah. that. So, yeah, so that's... that's, that's uh, some good information to uh, share with you all out there that's trying to be your own, uh, own your own businesses. Don't get trapped in just one thing mm -hmm. because when that downtime comes, you still got to pay those bills. Those bills still got to be paid. So if you got two or three more things that you're good at, mm -hmm. don't just be going out here getting no jobs, man, and, and nigga, you ain't going to last. Right. That's just a waste of time. Your time and whoever you're working for time. But Get back to you, Kelvin. So after you you did this the radio thing and all that, then where you go from there? Well, I'm currently, you know, I was a, I'm a still uh, a government employee. Okay. Um, you know, man, I've been doing that for like 14 years, but you know, that's like you said, that's what's paying the bills. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, what I mean, but what I really want to do, you know, what I'm saying, I, I like entertaining people. You mm -hmm. know, what I mean, so. Entertainment, even when I'm at work and stuff like that, certain people say, tell me, they was like, I mean, you good at what you do, real good, but this ain't where you supposed to be. Right. You know what I mean? This, you know, other people see stuff in you that you might not see in right. yourself. Right. You know, and I mean, even remember, you know, you told me plenty right. of times. Yeah, because you know I, I mean? think you should be doing comedy, you ask yeah, me. Yeah, I mean, because yeah. you, you funny as hell. Yeah. You want to do some comedy for us? Well, get. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm thinking, but you know what? Because I always remember that you said that. And there's other people that said that to me too. So that also motivated me to do the things that I'm doing now. And that's why I said I jumped out out there and started trying to get into the TV thing to get the com be comfortable mm -hmm. to do things like that. And so, like, I've been working on a, a web series. I'm a, a cast member on, on a web series that hasn't come out yet. Um, but it's, they they working on a um, we shot an episode already and. Um, they working on the, you know, the whole business. But where, where, did, where you shoot it at? Um, we actually shot it around the corner from here. Oh, really? Yeah, them, uh, back there, um, the new place, the new apartments back there. Is them condos? Yeah, uh, I guess so. What, what's that's that what street? We, what's that? I'm not even sure the name of the street. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we actually shot it around here. Um, that was one of the one of the areas. Um, mm -hmm. I know the scenes that I was in, we shot over here. But uh, you know, that's that was my. A few years ago, I went up to Harvard University and um, auditioned for a web series. Um, got the part, you know, was, learned all my lines and things like that. And um, the person that was doing that, she backed away from the project. Okay. You know what I mean? So I ain't let that stop me because I, I didn't, I was trying to figure out, like, all right, I, I still want to do things. Like, I love web series. Mm -hmm. Like, that's the thing. Independent films and things like that. Right. I just love it. You know what I mean? So. Um, I ran into one of my old friends from high school um, about a year or two ago, and you know we were just talking. I went to a cookout, and I was like, you know, I want to get in the acting thing. Come to find out, he works at like you know like TV One or something like that. Right, so right. he told me he working on his 
own projects. Oh, okay. And I told him, keep me in mind, like, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to do that. Right. And he kept me in mind. And um, that's how I ended up doing the web series thing. Um, and that led to other people that was on the set. They, you know, they saw the same thing that you were saying. So mm-hmm. one person came to me, he was like, man, I think you need to be doing I had him laughing the whole time right, right. on set. So another director that was on the set um, mentioned to me that they had a project coming up soon and they was gonna want me to be part of it or whatever. So I was like, all right. You know, I ain't hear from him for like months, almost a year. Mm-hmm. And then one day I just got a call from him and it's an upcoming, he's shooting a short film. And he told me he rode the road just for me. Right, You right. know what I mean? So in a few weeks, I'm not sure exactly when we're gonna start shooting, but um, I'm gonna be in this short film soon. And that's a good thing for me. Uh, you know, just, is I just gonna, see Is everything. it gonna be here in DC or? The, yeah, the short film is gonna be yeah. shot here in DC. Okay, Yeah, okay. cause the, the uh, director, um, he said he's he gonna do a, a couple projects here in DC. Okay, all right. And um, with that same crew, it also just led to me getting other hookups. Um, uh, with I, you had Thomas Body Jr. Yeah, his son yeah, on here a couple yeah. weeks ago. He called me out the blue and shout out to him because he uh, I did a cameo of appearance in his upcoming movie. Uh, okay. What's it called? Um, can't even think of it. Uh, Virgil's Law. Right. Yeah, right. I you mentioned a, that. Yeah, I had a cameo appearance in that. So uh, shout out to him for you know doing that for me and um and also with the web series I shot they uh they got me connected with this director from L A okay they came to D C last week um they shot a movie recently about a, a artist that's supposed to be from D C okay and um they needed to get some shots of like real D C right they want to get what you normally see downtown D C mm-hmm. monument. Mm-hmm. They wanted to get the real. They wanted to get in the mud. Yeah, so yeah. The, the director from Webster just called me and was like, "Look, I got this LA director coming in town, and they need to be taken around town so they get some shots, mm-hmm. meet the real people of DC." Right. And he was like, "The person I thought of that can really do it, right, is you." Right. And right. I was like, I was like, when? He was like, tomorrow or two days later, something like that. I was like, hell yeah. Yeah. And I told my super, I was like, hey. I got it, you know, I told this is a chance of a lifetime. Yeah, yeah. So I took that opportunity. Um, I uh, took them all through these, man. I took them to the And you ain't bring them to me, man? Man, man I, I'm D.C., man. Look, look, I was trying to give them to everybody. We went down to farms, you know, they closing the farms. Oh, my man. God, that's yeah. my hood, you know, man. I know that's, your, that's the home. Oh, my took God. Them down there. Uh, you know, they closing the farms down, so they got shots of just showing you know how the DC going through the gentrification thing now. Mm-hmm. You know, man, I took him up on Martin Luther King Avenue. Like we even seen the dude, man, walking butt naked down the street. What? Man, about ten o'clock in the morning, man. What? But they ain't filmed that far. <laughs> but we just having to drive. When I took him from, like, from Burry Farms up to like just up to like Mellon Street, uh-huh. they was like, man, when we stopped. They was like, man, we saw so much just from there to there, yeah. which ain't nothing but a couple blocks. They right. was like, man, see. We'll never be able to see this real DC without right. somebody like you with us. Right, right, you know right, right, right. So right. took them out Southwest and the project and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. And um, of course you can't just go in no neighborhood with no cameras and nothing right, like that. Right, so right. I know a lot of people, a lot of places. So right. I before I brought them there, I hired at some people. Let them know, look, I'm bringing a director right. from LA. Right. She trying to catch the real DC. Right. You know what I mean? They was like, all right, bring them through. Then if I was just popping up at the neighborhood, I just I go in there first, holler at them, right. let them know like, look, this is what we doing. This right. ain't no, and everybody was just down with it because yeah, we want the real DC. Yeah, most we don't definitely. Want that, most what definitely. you keep seeing on? Yeah, on down TV. at the White House yeah, in the Capitol, yeah. man. And that's you know Washington, man. man. That's not you DC. Know, that ain't where you know, yeah. with the struggle. Right. You know, that's what you call that, the struggle, yeah. man. With, but 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 through the struggle, mm-hmm. you have guys like me and yourself. Right. Guys like Ron, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That that we came out of somewhere, mm-hmm. and we had to build ourselves. Right. You know what I'm saying? We right. we don't have the silver spoon. You mm-hmm. know, we you know we had the mothers that were saying you better and you need to. You know what I'm saying? Right. Or this where you gonna be? Mm-hmm. You follow what I'm at? Yeah. With Kevin, I most definitely man appreciate this this uh, knowledge that you've given us, man. It seemed like God been most definitely motivating you. Year after year after year after year, man, in your life, man, oh, yeah. and uh, you most definitely, man, got a, got a, a sunshine at the end of your tunnel. Believe that. Yeah. If you just continue to stay focused and keep going direction, man, that you're going in, because it's it's nothing like 
trying to accomplish the dreams mm -hmm. and the things you want to do. Right. And we got so many people out here that hates that. Mm -hmm. Why they hate it, I don't know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because, you know, I got to ask myself sometimes, why you ain't happy about this shit? Right. Why you ain't behind me pushing me about this? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What is it that I'm doing that you can't do? Because you can do the same thing I'm doing if that's what you want to do. You definitely can. You know what I mean? You got so many people out here hating on you doing this or hating on you having this or hating on you being this kind of way. Mm -hmm. Everybody is different. And so that's why when I was taking the director through certain neighborhoods, because every neighborhood we went in, I mean, one time they hopped out the car and just started recording something, and it was a dude sitting in the car, and he was just like, oh, what y'all doing? I ain't even get out of the car yet. He was right. like, oh, what y'all doing, whatever. And so I walked up, and I was like, he was like, oh, Kelbo? He was like, oh, y'all with Kelbo? Y'all good? Yeah. And so, like, every neighborhood I took them in or all over the city, right. they was we was getting the same reaction in right. high places. Right. And so she asked me, she was like, but she was like, but what's the difference between you and them? Like, like she, I think she was looking like, seeing people out there and she might think they just ain't doing nothing or something mm -hmm. like that. They just hanging in the neighborhood and then see me coming from the same places, but I'm, I'm doing, I'm doing something or whatever. And so I didn't, I definitely wasn't talk down on them or nothing like that. Right. But I was like, nah, that's some people doing some real stuff out here. Right. But I said, I'm only speak for myself. I was like, you know, I got, you know, the way I was brought up, it wasn't no choice right. but to do that. It right. wasn't no choice. You know, I wasn't going to, my mother wasn't going to let me fall through the cracks. Right, right. You know what I mean? I appreciate that 100%. Right, so, right. you know, it's just, it's all about your your back, your back, background and your back and the people that's pushing behind you. Right. And then you also got to, you know, you got to want something for yourself. Right. Like I want yeah. something. So, Most definitely, man. So, you know. Most definitely, man. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, like, you know, like, man, I, I, I just look at my life today from me growing up mm -hmm. in the hood, Burry Farm, doing whatever it took, right. you know what I'm saying? And um, I used to always, when I was young, I used to always think that like, man, I'm not even gonna make it to 21. Like, mm -hmm. cause I was just doing so much, so much was going on, like, I'd probably be dead by 21, man. Right. And I'm saying, man, I'm here today, man, where I feel as though I have a good life. Mm -hmm. You know, it can be better. Right. But I have a good life, man, and I and I just thank God, you know what I mean, that mm -hmm. that saved me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And we gotta save some you can't change people. Let me let me say that first. Because a lot of people think that when when you got a nephew or son or cousin that's out in the street doing this thing, mm -hmm. that because you done changed your life, that you can just step into their life and be like, man, you can't do that. Man, you don't need to do that, man. You got to do Because they ain't going to hear that. Mm -hmm. Because when I was young, I ain't hear it. My right. uncles, my mothers, my, you know, older cousins, mm -hmm. you know, they was like, man, you ain't got to do all that slim, man. You need to slow down, man. You woo -woo. And, man, that went in one end out the other. Right. Because it was an experience that I had to go through in order, in order, you know, in order for me to know you know, and I'm saying I done went through some stuff. Yeah. You did? Mm -hmm. And I'm saying now today, like, I'm I'm proud of you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm proud of my sons. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because they not living a reckless life. Right. And and, and when and when I came, you remember we, we, we all got together for um Christmas New Year's. Yeah, yeah, New Year's. And, and we went the, down uh, to the Union, um, Town. Union Town, man. That's a bank now. Yeah, man, yeah, yeah, yeah man. How things change, yeah, real quick, real quick. <laughs> but um, I had told my sons, man, I was like, man, look, I done already paid the do dues for y'all. Mm -hmm. Y'all ain't gotta go to jail. Right. Y'all ain't gotta do that, Slim. I done already did that for y'all, man. Mm -hmm. And and I'm and I'm proud to say that ain't none of them going to jail. Right. They they living a a normal life. They all ain't, you know. Too. Yeah. They, all them in the entertainment. Yeah, too. yeah. They rappers and all that. Producers, and and like I actors. said on my first segment. I'm gonna bring my kids through here. It ain't like they ain't gonna come through here. You see, I got Big K here mm -hmm. already. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I had Thomas Jr. here. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So week by week, one of them gonna be here mm -hmm. to be able to express how life has changed into a better life. Because some people just think life is just so messed up. But life is what you put into it. Mm -hmm. Life is what you put into it. If you put in, if you don't put the time in to do the right thing or 
take the right classes or had a right partner in your life because that makes a difference too. You know, you can be with somebody that's crazy as fuck mm -hmm. and drive you crazy and try to make you think something wrong with you. Right. And there ain't nothing wrong with you because you're trying to do your own thing. You're trying to do something. They may don't have the same dreams you have. Mm -hmm. But the message, the message that we deliver in the day is how that you can come from the hood and you can accomplish so much if you stay focused. Mm -hmm. And on that note right there, one more time, man, give us a call, 240-719-2560. For any comments, anything you may like to ask me, anything you may like to ask Kelbo, man, call us up, and we're going to rap with you. If you don't call us up, man, we'll see you next week, and we'll talk to you then. It's whenever you're ready. But don't be afraid to call in. Don't be shy. Don't nobody know who you is when you call for whatever comment or whatever thing you may ask. But we're going to take a break one more time, man. When we come back, man, we're going to wrap this thing up. All right? We're going to do this for y'all, man. A little something we put together. Huh? It's called Ooh, I Hey. Don't play with you.
one and only Let's Do It Again band and show Tom Mo with my special guest, Big K. At the round table, man, just talking about real life, man, and, and how uh, we grow year after year and how we try to be positive. And, and what we want to do is just kind of talk about some things, man, that you all out there may be going through too. You know what I'm saying? And, and don't get a chance to really uh, talk about it. That's why we keep saying call in. And, uh, you know, we make it talk about some situations that you're going through give you some, some advice about it. Because experience is the best thing. Experience. If you haven't went through nothing, then how are you going to tell somebody else about it? Mm -hmm. How to get through it? You know, how to make it better. You know what I'm saying? And I'm saying that uh, right now, man, I mean, Big K, man, he, he done motivated himself, man, in places I ain't, I didn't even really know that uh, he was into that that acting thing real good. But I'm going to tell y'all, man, this guy here, man, is funny for real. You know what I mean? I'm talking about just like off the normal, sit around the kitchen, you know, at a party somewhere, man. He, you know, if he just get to talking, it, it, he lets loose, man. And I'm talking about you, you on the floor. And, but he just don't do it like now. If I say, man, go ahead, man, give us something funny. He, he ain't that kind of dude. He just ain't going to just be like, like that. I got y'all one day though. Yeah, it, you know, I got y'all one day. Yeah, it, it just it just comes it just comes from the hip, man. But uh, I want to uh, bring to you all attention, man. That um, I'm I'm going to start working on a commercial. I job been out there in the city, man, trying to get some sponsors too, man. You know, because I I, I really like this uh, this segment. I like the show, man. I like the uh, be able to spread some knowledge. I like to be able to bring people to you all that y'all don't even know. You know what I mean? Because we always following celebrities, you know, on uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram, uh, TikTok, uh, Tweet, Twitter. <laughs> yeah, I said Tweet. <laughs> Twitter, you know what I mean? But we got celebrities right here in, in town, man. Mm -hmm. Right here in town, man, that nobody knows nothing about, man, until that day they be discovered, and then boom, oh, where he come from, or where she come from, but everybody putting that work in. Mm -hmm. I'm putting that work in. You know what I'm saying? Not that I'm trying to be a celebrity, but I'm trying to do the gifts God gave me. Because I don't know how you all into the, the word, but all of us got so many gifts, man, that God has blessed us with. But it's up to you to open those gifts up and share it to the world because that's what he gave it to you for. He didn't give you gifts just to have to yourself. You got gifts you share, and you have different gifts. It ain't, it ain't all the way about you. Got to be a comedian, a singer, or you know how to play a guitar or drum. It may be a gift of just loving, just knowing how to love somebody, just knowing how to pick somebody up when they down. You know, you may have a gift of of making sure somebody all right. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Sometimes it gets tiresome when you always looking out for somebody. But guess what? When you're looking out for him, he's looking out for you. Because if he wasn't looking out for you, guess what? You wouldn't be able to look out for them. Try it one day. Stop giving. Stop giving. And let's see what you get. Let's see what you get. This is real talk, man. I'm trying to tell you. I don't mind giving. I don't have a problem with that. But I'm real particular when I'm giving. You know what I mean? I'm real particular when I'm giving. Because some people don't even appreciate when you give. They don't appreciate it. Some people think you're supposed to give them something. They think they ain't supposed to do nothing. Well, and then you know what? I'm fun that's when you said that because you know I got this tattoo a couple weeks ago. And what that say? It say, give a man a fish, feed him for a day, teach a man a fish, feed him for a lifetime. Oh man. You know what I'm saying? And, man, you and that's the whole point of me getting that because, you know, I can just give you something. Yeah. But if I you know what I'm saying, I can give you some money. Mm -hmm. And you can go spend that money that day and don't have no more money. But if I can teach you how to get some money, mm -hmm. then you always got a skill that you got right, to you know, go yes, back to. Yes. So, you know, I'm a firm believer in that. You know what I'm saying? I'm well, just, I want to say, man, if something happened to you, I'm going to cut that part of your arm <laughs> off, man, and keep that, man. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can Google it, too, though. No, nah, but, but I'm just saying it's on your arm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hey. But, yeah, man, uh, we, we, we got we to gotta get a knowledge uh out to our brothers and sisters, man, that's out here in the world, man, because it's like, man, teach one, teach another. 
Don't don't be selfish in your life. Don't be selfish. Don't be mad at the next person. Don't think you bigger than life because the same ones that you know going up will be the same ones you meet when you come back down. Mm -hmm. Believe that. I experienced that, so that's why I'm saying it. I'm not even going to uh, act like, you know what I mean, I'm on top of the world because I'm far from on top of the world. I just think that I'm trying to keep my focus where it needs to be at to grow. Because I like every year I like to do something every year that, that, that shows that I'm growing. You know what I mean? Like this this uh, this broadcast right here, this is a, a part of me growing in 2019. Mm -hmm. Because 2018, I wasn't doing that. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm trying to motivate my, my band members. Mm -hmm. Up, we, do we got a call? Yes, sir. Okay. Oh man, let's see what's up. Hello, welcome to Let's Do It Again Band and Show. How can I talk to you? Well, as you know, this is your boy DJ Rick. <laughs> DJ Rick! What's up, man? Just want to tell you, brother, you're doing a fine job um, with your show. Um, even though you've been copying off me, but uh, it's all good. <laughs> I, no. hey, hey, Rick, I knew you wanted to come on air and say that, man. You terrible. <laughs> you, know, you know I had to call and, and, and say that, man. But now, on, on a for real tip, man, you're doing a wonderful job, man. You've been having some bomb uh, uh, hosts on the, on the show. And, uh, man, all I got to say is, man, just keep it up and uh, keep doing your thing, man. Well, Rick, man, I, I most definitely appreciate that coming from you, man, because since we've been together, you've been motivating me in a whole lot of different ways you don't know, and I ain't even going to say it on live TV, but you're going to always be my man. We go back like car seats. Yeah, man, you know how we do, man. And, hey, who, who you got on your host at your show tonight? Man, I got my son, man, Kelvin, man. Call him Big K, man. What's up with you, Rick? What's going on, baby boy? I'm all right. I'm cool, man. How you? Oh, man, we doing it, man. We doing it, man. Me and your dad go back, man. So, I mean, you know, it's like I'm I'm going to be really honest. I'm just, I'm just leaving uh, downtown doing sound for our Army of Jazz. That's what I do, man. Oh, that's that's what I'm doing. Oh, um, man. Like I said, man, your dad, man, hey, he doing some things, man. And, and, hey, all I got to say is, man, I appreciate him. Oh, I really appreciate him. Well, one thing I can say, man, I had you on security last night, and you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> hey, <bye>, man. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's funny, ain't it? Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> hey, man, y'all take it easy, man. I just had to call in, man. Man, I really appreciate you calling in, man. I'll talk to you soon, baby boy. All right, cool. All right, man. Yeah, man, that's, that's, that's my man, man. Hey, man, you know... DJ Rick on the ones and twos, man. He also got a segment up here too. On what what date, Rick's up Saturday. here on Saturdays, man? So y'all make sure y'all tune in on Saturday. What's the time? Six thirty, man. Y'all tune in on Rick, man. DJ Rick, he uh, most definitely, man, be having some uh, good guests. This is how I actually got into it because he invited me on his show a couple of times, and uh, I came up the last time, and um, I was like, man, I need my own show. I keep coming up here. Talking to y'all, man. I got something I want to say. Yeah, last stuff you want to yeah say. and uh, me, 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 and Reggie, man. Reggie was like, man, whenever you ready, man. Whenever you ready. So next thing you know, man, two weeks, man. I'm here. You know what I mean? But uh, yeah, I appreciate uh, you calling in, though, Rick, man. I can't get none of my friends, uh, my my associates, my family to call in for some point of reason. They think everybody gonna know it's them. Mm -hmm. But as soon as they get with me on the outside of the show, they got a lot yeah, to talk about. To yeah. A whole lot to talk. Oh yeah, and you know such and such and such and such. Yeah. Man, it, it, it's terrible. But guess what? I still love y'all. It ain't gonna change, you know what I mean? But uh, don't, be, uh, don't forget that um, I'll be right back here next Wednesday, man, same time. 9.30 to 10.30. The phone number ain't going to change. 240-719-2560. And if you want to be on my show, if you want to come on here, then all you got to do is email me at let's do it again band at gmail.com. And, man, I'm going to read it, and then we're going to get together, and we're going to talk about what you're trying to talk about because if you're trying to come on here with some mess, it ain't even going to work because I ain't going to let you in. Period. This is about positivity, moving forward, growth, 
strength, love, and peace. That's what we presenting on Let's Do It Again Band and Show. Whenever I come on, man, I mean, it, if it get rough on here, we're going to get rough with it. Ain't no left to that. I'm off the south side, man, so I ain't even playing about that. I try to keep it peaceful, though. That's that's for real. Try to keep it peaceful. You know what I mean? Kevin, any shout-outs you want to give off? Man, I just want to shout out, man, my mother, my sister, my whole family, man. Say rest in peace to my uncles, man. I miss them. You know, lost one recently, so, you know, miss them. Uh, shout out to the whole DC. Um, also, if you want to keep up with me, I'm on my uh, Instagram is True Story 317, T R U E S T O R Y 317. That's Instagram, Facebook. It's Kel Bo True Story. Um, and I appreciate you having me on here, too. Oh, man. man. Look, yeah. I already know because, you know, we don't get together a whole lot. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I always like being in your presence, man. Oh, yeah. You know, because. Oh, yeah. I always get to holler at you it, and break bread. You yeah, know what it's, I'm saying? So, it's, it's like, you know, it's like when you're in the company with real, I'm talking about real positive men, right. you have such a good vibe. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because you know when you're around some creeps. Yeah. And when you have some creep, you're shut down. Right. You ain't really trying to, you know, because this nigga, ain't, you know. Mm -hmm. But anytime, man, I, I'm around you, man, the vibes, man, is always good, man. man you always that, show me the big love, man, mm -hmm. of being a part of the family, just being there, man. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Um, I want to get some shout outs, man, to uh, all my loved ones as well, man, that uh, my, my kids and everybody, man. Like, I got a band, man, that they don't even call in. And this show is about them. The show is named behind the band. And you, y'all got to excuse me. I keep saying niggas, but that's all we are. <laughs> As Bernie Mac said, I, I would let you know. But um, I, I got friends, man, that's 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 very supportive out there. And I know y'all are probably watching. And I appreciate y'all. I really do. I appreciate you more though if you called in. But um, I, I, I appreciate the support that I got. Uh, out there in the streets, man. I appreciate the support I get from my band, uh, from the people that's in the background. I, I, I got a lot of support. I just want y'all to know, man, that, that let's do it again, band, and show love y'all, man. Even if y'all not coming to the shows when we having them, you know what I mean? Because love is love. God created that in your heart, and the only way it's going to go out your heart is if you let it go out your heart. I don't believe in the devil made me do it. I don't believe in that. Because once you get a certain age, man, you know right from wrong, you make your own decisions. Mm -hmm. So if your life want to down low, then guess what? That means you need to do something to turn it around and bring it back up. Mm -hmm. You can't expect for a man to, to make your life better. You can't expect for a woman to make your life better. Only person can make your life better is you. And that's the decisions that you make in your life or where you want to be. Can nobody change you. Nobody can change you. And on that note right there, I'm going to let y'all go with Let's Do It Again Band and Show. I love you, and I'll see you next week, same time, same station. Holla back. Catch y'all. We're quaking in the morning.